To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Manohar Veera from Examway. We thank you very much for supporting our new learning series. If you want us to continue to make videos like this, please give us a topic suggestions in the comments below. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel to get regular updates. In today's session, we are going to see about GDP, that is national income. We will be seeing why it is important and how it is calculated in India and across the globe. So GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product that we know but we are going to know how to calculate that in this session. Ok, let's get started. GDP or National Income measures the monetary value of the flow of output of goods and services produced in an economy over a time period. While uncoding the definition, we can easily figure out what is GDP is. It is monetary value, that is, value expressed in a designated currency. And output of goods and services. It only takes into account output of goods and services, but not normal transfers between residents and inflow of foreign exchange for personal consumptions. And it's over a period of time. GDP is always calculated for a particular definite time period. Usually it is one year. Measuring the level and rate of growth of national income is important for keeping track of the rate of economic growth, changes to living standards, changes to the distribution of income between groups within the population. So the gross domestic product is the total value of output produced in a given time period. GDP includes the output of foreign owned businesses that are located in a nation following foreign direct investment. For example, the output produced at the Nissan car plant in Chennai contributes to India's GDP even though Nissan is not an Indian company. There are three ways calculating the GDP, all of which in theory should sum the same amount. They are national output value, national expenditure that is aggregate demand value and national income value. In theory, all these values will be equal. The first method is expenditure method that is aggregate of demand. The full equation for GDP using this approach is GDP is equal to CIG plus X minus M. Uh, to expand this, C is consumer spending, I is investment, G is government spending, X stands for exports and M stands for imports. So it is like summing up all the things like consumer spending, investments, government spending and exports and then reducing imports from that value will give you the GDP of particular year. So all these values has to be taken uh, from the same period for which you want the GDP value. The second method is income method. GDP is the sum of the incomes in through the production of goods and services. This is income from people and jobs and self-employment profits of private sector businesses, rent income from the ownership of land, these put together will form gross domestic product in the income method. Only those incomes that are come from the production of goods and services are included in the calculation of GDP by the income approach. Thereby, it excludes transfer payments, that is, the state pension, income support for families and low incomes, the jobs keepers allowance for the unemployed and any other welfare assistance such as housing benefit and incapacity benefits will not be taken into account. Private transfer of money from one individual to another will also be not taken into account. And the major thing is incomes that are not registered with tax authorities. Every year, Billions of rupees worth of activity is not declared to the tax authorities. This is known as the shadow economy and it is otherwise known as black money. The published figures for GDP by factor incomes will be inaccurate because much of the activity is not officially recorded. The third type is GDP by output. Grass value added and contributions to a nation GDP. There are three main wealth generating sectors in an economy Manufacturing and Construction Primary 
which includes oil and gas farming, forestry and fishing, and a wide range of service sector industries. This measure of GDP adds together the value of output produced by each of the productive sectors in the economy using the concept of value added. Value added is the increase in the value of goods and services as a result of the production process. So the value added is equal to value of production minus value of intermediate goods. For example, you're going to buy an onion dosa from your restaurants for rupees 60 and this is the retail price and will count as consumption. But the dosa has many ingredients at stages of the supply chain like rice growing farmers, batter makers, onion producers, various masala ingredient makers and also the value created by the restaurant as they put the dosa together and deliver to the consumer. So there are many supply chains involved in it. Some products have a low value added, for example, cheap t-shirts selling for little more than Rs. 99. These are low cost, high volume and low priced products. Other goods and services are such that lots of value can be added as we move from sourcing the raw materials through the final product. Examples are designer jewelry, perfumes, meals in expensive restaurants and sports cars. And also the increasingly lucrative computer games industry and software industry. In manufacturing and industrial, manufacturing is one of the production industries which also includes mining, electricity, water, waste management and oil and gas extraction. In the year 2016, the Indian manufacturing and industrial sector accounted for 29% of the total Indian GDP value. In the process of business of producing goods in factories is known as manufacturing, simple. The part of a company that is concerned with making goods rather than designing or selling them is known as manufacturers or industrialists. The creative force behind 10 billion unique products is manufacturers. It accounts for 15 to 20 percent of world economy and it employs roughly about 5% of the world population into it. Next we are going to see about the service sector industries. Services are part of the tertiary sector of the economy. There are many different service industries, some focusing on business to business and others business to consumer products. At present, service sector industries is giving the maximum ratio in the GDP of Indian values by 2016. The main service sector industries in India are hotels and restaurants and a range of services provided by the local governments, transports, logistics, storage and communication, business services and finance, motor trade, wholesale traders, retail traders, land transport and air transport, postals and telecommunications, courier services, real estate activities, computer and related activities, education, health, social work, sewage and refuse distribution, recreational, cultural and sporting activities and a lot more. The majority of Indian GDP comes from service industries such as banking and finance, software, tourism, retailing, education and health. In the year 2016, the service sector accounted for 54% of economic output, the industry and manufacturing sector for 29% and the agricultural sector for 17%. We are going to see the agricultural sector's brief information in the next slides coming. Agricultural sector is directly dependent on the environment for manufacture and production. In this sector whereby the raw materials are extracted from the earth, it includes those activities which lead to the production of goods by exploitation of natural resources. Agricultural sector includes agriculture, forestry and logging, fishing and related activities and it is accounting for 17% of India's GDP as we have seen in the earlier, earlier slide. The last thing we are going to see is per capita grass national income. So we have calculated GDP using any one of the three methods. In India, we follow the method GDP value of output. So very recently by 2013, I think the GDP calculations base year and the pricing methodology has been changed that we will see in a different session. And the last thing to finish up this session is calculating per capita gross national income from the GDP value. How much does each person earn on average in a country? 
we use per capita measures to give us a guide to this. Income per capita is a way of measuring the standard of living for the inhabitants of a country. The gross national income per capita is equal to gross national income divided by total population. Per capita income means income per head of population. So, uh, so it is equal to total GDP value divided by the total population of a country. For example, if India's GDP value is 1000 lakh crores means we will divide it by 120 crores which is the population now and we will get the figure per capita income. In many countries like India, the official population data is taken once in 10 years or 15 years. So it is not accurate for every year. So from the statistics available, India's per capita income is $263 in 1980 and it's gradually increased by 1990 to $363 per annum and by 2000 it increased to 438 and suddenly it grown up to $1,345 per person per annum in 2010. It's mainly because of the growth in the software and banking industry. In 2016, it stands at $1,709 per person per annum in India. So we have given the uh, snapshot of those details here. You can look at it by pausing the video. With this, we have come to the end of this session. In the next session, we will be seeing the difference between the actual and nominal GDP values. Friends, if you like the video, please share with your friends. And without forgetting, suggest us topics to make our next video. Thank you.